2012 City Commission meeting to order. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Mayor Angel? Here. Commissioner Crawford? Here. Commissioner Householder? Here. Commissioner Jennings? Commissioner Shirley? Here. Please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Next item on the agenda is the Citizens Forum. If there's anyone here from the public that wants to speak on any issue that is not on today's agenda, come on up to the podium. Give us your name and address. <laughs> I guess not. We'll go on to awards and proclamations. Item 4.1, Certificate of Recognition to Michelle Britt for her fundraising <laughs> efforts for the City Go benches serving the public transit system in the city of Salina. Item 4.2, presentation of plaques of appreciation to outgoing employee council members. Will Michelle Britt, Ron Denkenbridge, Kent Johnson, Josh Morris, and uh, Joe Sherminsky come forward? Is Michelle here? Hey, come on up. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> much but for all the work you've done to get those benches put in at city go and actually commissioner shirley gets credit for the idea of giving you this but thanks for all your Thank work you. and for the initiative you took on getting those benches put at the city go stops i appreciate it sure mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you <laughs> Employee council you served for a year, right? Thank you for your service. Do you get to do anything fun on the council? Oh, there's always fun. <laughs> <laughs> Ron Denkenbring? Am I close? Is that Very it? Good. <laughs> You're on employee council as well. Thank you for your service for your time. Thank you. Okay, Joe, I'm not even going to try it. Sierminski? Yes, very good. <laughs> Were you on employee council as well? Right. Thanks for your service for Thank you. serving on the council. Thank you. Ken Johnson, I can, yeah, you know, that's yeah, I can say that one. Thanks, Ken, for serving on the council. look like we have any public hearings or items scheduled for a certain time so we'll move on to the consent agenda item 6.1 approve the minutes of January 9 2012 item 6.2 approve the purchase of four Bullard T320 thermal imaging cameras in the amount of thirty nine thousand three hundred dollars item 6.3 award a contract for the 2012 ADA ramps to Davis concrete construction in the amount of thirty seven thousand $942.80 with a 3% contingency of $1,138.28. Item 6.4, award of contract for the 2012 crack and joint ceiling to Missouri Pavement Maintenance in the amount of $217,899.22 with a 3% contingency of $6,536.98. Item 6.5, authorize the maintenance of water well number two to Lane Christensen Company in the amount not to exceed $49,139.06. Item 6.6, .6, approve the purchase of four wastewater pumps from Smith & Loveless Incorporated in the amount of $47,190. So Commissioner, want to remove any of these items from the consent agenda or have any questions? I got a quick question, just, just an interesting question thing here i don't know if this is who this is directed at but it's just odd that we had a city estimate and one of our bidders came in exactly the same it just kind of i just noticed that which one are you on on this uh, i'm sorry on the 2012 crack joint ceiling was that 6.4 yeah who is that mr stack here you are oh yeah <clears throat> i didn't know if these are sealed or what it's just an that's an extreme oddity that was an extreme oddity <laughs> I thought it was a typo, and I checked all the bids again, and our administrative staff said, yeah, it's the exact same numbers. Huh. 
Was there maybe a, a mathematical amount that was used? Have they done some work for us in the past maybe that maybe we based our estimates off of? Or? They've never won. They've always been close, but they've never actually won the bid. Yeah. Now, Dan, the timing of the, the estimate's actually out typically ahead of the bid, is, isn't it? Or I assume it was in this case. Pretty close, yeah. It's, it's they may have just said, hey, maybe we don't have a lot of time. Let's just... Gotcha, okay. The estimates real low. Sorry, okay, I'm sorry. You send the estimates out to these... Well, this, these are sealed, so the engineer's estimate is sealed as well. Oh, it's might, sealed as well. They know the okay. budget, but they don't know the actual sealed amount. Right. So that, yeah, we, we turned <laughs> okay. it in. So well, I, just, I mean, no, <clears throat> no big deal. That's just, like I said, I figured they were sealed. It just seemed like a real odd that it was down to the penny with 60 cents. I don't. <laughs> think the probabilities would suggest that I, I will we'll need to see why, nah, no, why they no, did that. No big deal. I just like that I said, is it, odd. it stood out with the 60 cents and you know, you know how I am with these 60 cent things. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, okay. That's it. Thanks guys. Good check on the Commissioner. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? And so motion moved. we approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the consent agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed same sign. Motion passes 4-0. Uh, no development business today, so we're on to administration. Item 8.1, second reading ordinance number 12, 10,626, amending the sign of code by adding section 824.1, amending table 2902.1 of the International Building Code, eliminating the requirement for restrooms in storage group S occupancies. Uh, ordinance number 12-10626 was passed on first reading on January 9th, 2012. Since that time, no comments have been received. Is there any public comment on this item today? Is there any further discussion amongst the commission? Seeing none, I'll bring it to the commission for action. Uh, Madam Mayor, I move that we approve ordinance number 12-10626 on second reading. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt Ordinance 12-10626 on second reading. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Commissioner Crawford? Uh, aye. Commissioner Householder? Aye. Commissioner Shirley? Aye. Mayor Angel? Aye. Motion passes 4-0. Item 8.2, Resolution Number 126875, Adopting a Policy Regarding Volunteer Citizen Board Commissions and Committees. Mr. Gage. Thank you, uh, Mayor and Commissioners. The, uh, for some time, the city has had a policy uh, through resolution, actually since 1990, in which there were certain criteria for uh, dealing with the appointment of commissions, uh, committees, and boards, and uh, the roles uh, with the city and so forth. Um, we've for some time been looking at that and really needed to uh, update it. And uh, we finally got to that point, and I'll sort of go over some of the modifications and changes. There's, there's really nothing of great significance. Most of it's uh, pretty much just things that we uh, observed. Um, but we wanted to make sure we're clarified in the uh, in the written version. Uh, we provide that the expression of interest forms are kept on file for two years. Typically, we haven't done that. We feel there's no harm in doing that if someone uh, wants to keep their name out actively. It's just really a clerical thing that the clerk's office is capable of doing. Um, notice notifications of vacancies are given to the mayor instead of the city manager's office, uh, primarily because the clerk's office uh, actually facilitates this, so there's really no role for our office in that, because I try to keep myself as far away from appointments as possible. It's just not part of the realm of what we do, so that just cleans that up as well. Um, Appointments to all boards with the exception of the uh, Salina Airport Authority Library Board and Community Corrections will occur in August with an effective date of September 1st. Uh, the, the other boards are more self-governed and appointments are coordinated uh, with their terms that are already established. Um, this includes language that allows uh, for a citizen to only serve on one board commission or committee at any given time. That's been an interpretation that you can't have a duality role in most cases, so this just clarifies that interpretation. Uh, decreases the overall attendance percentage. There was, there was a target before, but uh, it, re it retains that a volunteer will be notified when three consecutive meetings are missed and, then the, uh, uh, and when that uh, attendance falls below the percentage. And then the, the big difference here is it allows the mayor the authority to dismiss a member from a board due to attendance, conflict of interest, or conviction of certain violations such as felonies or crimes of moral turpitude. Basically, what this does is we've had a situation in which even with the best of intents, someone gets appointed to a board and for whatever reason they can't attend. And it's, it's awkward, really, to have that conversation. I mean, you could have that as a governing body if you want to retain that authority. But uh, we thought that if you were comfortable with the mayor having authority based on certain these certain criteria only, it just makes sense. And that way, if that person should choose not to step down, um, then 
they could, uh, the mayor could have them step down and then we could fill that position because our goal is to have someone there and participating. Otherwise, it doesn't benefit the city. Uh, and, Jace, yes, Jace could ahead. I ask a question there? Sure. Um, I did have it marked because um, in, above that it says the members of all citizen boards and commissions will be appointed in August. But that's not to say then that if someone is, um, or if the mayor asks someone to leave because they haven't been participating, that, that the mayor then can go ahead and appoint another person who's uh, put in an expression of interest, or do they have to wait on the next September? <laughs> yeah, I think as you, as you go further down, it does provide that that could be filled uh, earlier than okay. that time frame. Okay. Yeah, and again, I will tell you, we look at this very sensitively. And mm -hmm. in other words, we just don't look at the attendance sheet and say, oh, they haven't made it, they're off, let's get somebody on. There's a lot of conversation and communication about circumstance and so forth. And quite honestly, a lot of the time, the person who, you know, just figures out for whatever reason, I just can't make it, usually it will happily step down and then wait till a time maybe in, in their life, maybe it's a year from then, maybe it's a couple of years when they can and they know that they can contribute and they'll come back. And that's what we try to facilitate. Mm -hmm. So it's important to know how that works. Um, again, sh uh, shifts the, re the formal responsibility of providing board orientation materials uh, to the new members from our office to the city clerk's office. I think Greg and I will still uh, probably facilitate a lot of the general board orientation. We, we like to do that, and I think that's uh, useful. And then the technical orientation is from the specific staff people for each of those boards. Extends the annual reporting period from January 31st to February 15th. That's just a formality because it's tight time at that time of year to get all that in. Um, it does clarify that ad hoc committees are subject to the same open records policy and rules and procedures uh, by, uh, that are established for the, uh, the other boards and clarifies the adoption of bylaws and, and their need. So those are the, the main changes. Some additional things that we looked at are rules of procedure. The commission has operated on a separate rules of procedure uh, for some time. Those were modified not too many years ago. The boards were not technically under those rules of procedure and ended up in the big thick Robert's Rules of Order book. And, and that's okay. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. The, your rules of procedure are much easier to follow. It's a much thinner book. And for the most part, it's based on Robert's Rules of Order with a few uh, modifications. So we felt it was really much more simple to uh, educate the board members about rules of procedure using the process that the, the city commission is under. Um, I do want to say on that one, though, I want to take you right into the uh, uh, actual resolution. And in uh, on page, uh, actually, it's section 3E. 3E, where it says rules of procedure. Um, if we go further here and you, you're ready to approve this, we would like you to approve it with one modification, and that is that under rules of procedure, it should say all city boards. So the, insert the word city between all, the word all and the word boards. The reason for that is because our intention is that this aspect would not be applied to those separate authorities that we indicated in another section kind of had their own uh, statutory basis, and so city boards would make sure that that's clear. So it's kind of minor, but we want to make sure that we that we have that change. Uh, we talk a little bit more about the governing body liaison. There's there's been uh, confusion in the past about what the city commission liaison's role is, and we clarify that the role is no different than uh, a citizen who might be attending the meetings. So there's certain privileges that a citizen has and certain privileges that they do not, and the reason is it keeps you out of that duality and conflicts and things like that. So again, that's, that's just a clarification of an interpretation that we've applied in the past. And then probably the biggest thing, and, and probably the most encouraging and positive thing, is the, uh, in, uh, the inclusion of the youth liaisons. Our intent is to have a couple youth liaisons on practically all of our boards, and uh, not only just to be, be on there, uh, but to participate in the discussion and to actually vote. Now, we did clarify that the vote would have to be non-binding, and the reason is is because if we said, well, your vote counts, then the question is, is why, why don't we have other uh, classifications of individuals whose vote counts because we're carving that out. So mm -hmm. we said we want you to fully partake as much as you possibly can and feel ownership in it, but technically speaking, we can't count the vote, but we want them to vote because that's part of the learning process as well. So I want to clarify that, but I think this will really move us forward um, with regards to uh, incorporating youth and youth input into what we do every day in the uh, advisory decisions that we get from our boards. And uh, Gina McDonald, our human relations director, gets the uh, kudos for this. She's worked hard to put this together and put this in here. So that's really it. Um, 
we believe it helps us with uh, with regards to how we utilize our boards and matches up with our uh, quality of services uh, goal from our strategic plan. And uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. And uh, and certainly, staff would recommend adoption of uh, resolution 12-6875. Any questions for staff? I know this has been needed for a long time, and I really appreciate the work that everybody's put into it because it's it's important to those people that serve on boards and commissions. See several youthful looking people in the audience, but probably just one youth. <laughs> 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 if you have any interest, take it back to school and <laughs> let everybody know we're looking for qualified kids to help serve on these uh, boards. Okay. <laughs> well, they didn't even ask that of the commission. <laughs> you had to be qualified. <laughs> Is there any public comment on this? Then I'll bring it to the Commission for action. I move we adopt item resolution number 12-6875 with the change that Jason mentioned on section uh, 3E, e. all city boards with that wording. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution 12-6875. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes 4-0. Item 8.3, resolution number 126874, authorizing the mayor to sign a scientific resolution panel request form. Mr. Stack. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Commissioners. This is the um, basically the next step that we believe in our, our ongoing uh, FEMA mapping. Maybe saga is the right word, maybe not, but it's it's been going on since uh, 2005, actually. The intent originally with updating our maps to digital maps uh, began as a modernization effort by FEMA to uh, basically create a little better maps than what we've had since 1986. And so it's been an ongoing um, struggle, basically trying to get those maps to what we believe accurately reflects the floodplain. So the background is pretty lengthy on that. Dean definitely helped me out a lot with this blue sheet, but I'll just try to hit the highlights here. Um, we've filed two appeals thus far on March 15th and January 14th, 2010 and 2011. Uh, they were formal appeals um, disputing some of the uh, errors on the maps that we believed were uh, needed to be corrected before the maps went final. One of the biggest challenges with the maps are that we have a lot of uh, map revisions, letter of map amendments. So I believe it's over 2,000 from what Dean has said, which basically means everybody um, has a has a map amendment. Their, their house has been taken out of the floodplain. So those are very important to a lot of the constituents. And FEMA did not have record of, of almost 60%, um, only 40% they had record of at the time. So it took quite a while for them to resolve uh, those issues. Dean has definitely been actively involved with them for the last few years uh, with that issue, and they're close. They've actually got most of the of the LOMAs accounted for now in their in their database. There's a few that, he st that we still need to revise, and those we talk about here, and he's going to send those in. Um, so that's really the main, um, the main thing that's taken, I know, FEMA quite a while to try to um, definitely have, have some of the most Lomas as anybody in the U.S. So it's 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 a it's a major effort to try to keep track of all those. <coughs> August fourth was a time when we got a, a letter from FEMA that said that they have put they had put our maps on hold. The remapping project had had uh, been put on hold while FEMA developed a policy for mapping communities whose levies had not yet been certified. So that is our our levy certification process is in in process right now, um, but they're they're trying to come up with a new way to uh, map communities. Basically, the, the push was acknowledging that there is a levy there, and whether it's certified or not has some certification has some value, but it's still there even if it's not certified. So that has some value as well, and how are they going to map that? The, the original intent was to just say, well, it's not there, and then we'll just flood the entire city. And we, everybody who has a levy knows that's not the case. So, But certification does give you a higher level, and they're going to try to figure out what that what that um, policy is, and that hasn't been determined yet. So our, our maps have actually been put on hold until pending the review of that policy and when that will actually occur, we're not sure yet. But after August 4th, they sent us a final 
uh, written response to all the comments, comments on November 10th that we had sent in before that, all of our um, appeals, basically. We'd sent them quite a few lengthy appeals of maps and um, revisions to the maps that needed to be changed and a lot of uh, scientific um, technical analysis errors that were raised. So they uh, have a consultant working for them that's trying to, from what we understand, close out their contract and get us off the books. And they have not been able to do that because they, they keep going to this these same maps that we think are in error and have lots of challenges with them. So however, while FEMA did modify some of the maps, and that's through their con subconsultant, Michael Baker, they did not... Um, they didn't really extend the logic that we found in one area and extend that to the rest of the city. Basically, they've got one area that's been over-exaggerated for flooding, we believe, and for, for good technical reasons. But they said, well, you've only looked at this one area. We're not going to look at the rest of the city for just because you think one area is wrong. And we say, well, if one area is wrong, why isn't, I mean, how, how do we know the rest of the city hasn't been over-exaggerated as well? And it costs a lot of money to review the whole city again for our, on our own dime. So we've raised that issue with them repeatedly, but they consider, they basically consider the maps to be adequate for the original intent of the study. So we don't feel like that is a good answer and further analysis is needed. And thus they've given us this new process, <laughs> the scientific resolution panel, which is basically supposed to be an independent third party group of hydraulic um, engineers and people that are interested in, that understand um, flooding basically but they don't necessarily work for FEMA from what we understand. So they're at, at supposed to be an independent review panel um, for situations just like ours, I guess. There's plenty of other cities who have concerns and similar concerns. We believe, of course, ours are more unique and with 2,000 Lomas, we feel like we have a lot to, um, we have a lot more to, uh, a lot more interest maybe than some other communities who don't have that many. But either way, since we haven't received the final maps and a final letter of a determination this process exists and based on this um, letter that they sent us we feel like even though we don't think these maps um, are going to go final uh, they they're on hold right now anyway so they'd have to let us know when they go off hold but we feel like that we have to send this request form in basically to um, keep the next step and the next level of the um, guess of our defense in this case so we keep stepping up the appeals and the scientific resolution resolution panel and then if necessary we can go to higher steps but at this point we're just thinking or asking you to uh, recommend that the city take advantage of this next step and we'll send in the same most of the same things we've sent in before and it may or may not get reviewed by this panel it hasn't been done in region 7 yet so we're not sure they're even going to utilize the process but so far this is the next step that they've given us, so we're going to see where this goes. So we've attached um, a resolution talking about this. Uh, for the, the mayor has signed the last few appeal documents, so we, we wanted the mayor to sign this one as well. Um, we've attached a few letters just to kind of give you some background. This has been going on a long time, so it's just we've had a few study sessions on it. And well, then, what would the timeline be if we went with this next step? They haven't been able to tell us that. <laughs> so we I talked with um, our, our consultant today who works all over the country, and there hasn't been, he, he didn't think there's been a request in Region 7, and he doesn't, be, he doesn't see why FEMA would want to make ours the first because there's so many problems with, with, our, with our maps and our, our level of our LOMAs, so many that we have. that There's obviously been problems with our maps in the past. If you can have 2,000 people that, you know, have lomas. It, that's, it means the water elevation must not be that high there because their houses, they've been able to prove that it's out of right. the floodplain. So it's, their maps have challenges anyway. So he doesn't believe that'll happen, but we don't, we don't know. That could happen in the next year, six months to a year, but it hasn't happened yet for anybody. So it's hard to say. Commissioners, the, the kind of the moral of the story is, as you know, the, the time frame that they initially provided regarding the levy was not, is not nearly long enough for any community. It just isn't. And then they're doing this at the same time they're looking at the internal 
the flood levels in our inside our community and our dance is to try to match those up and match the analysis so that one can help us with the other and we can come out hopefully with a positive answer but whatever the answer is is they don't give you enough time to do it so what this really does is is w what we want to do is take advantage of every appeal opportunity for two reasons one is is because we think their technical information is incorrect and that makes sense to do that and secondly because we want to utilize every time opportunity that's given to us to stretch the clock and that's what this does. Dan's right. We don't know if they'll look at it or how long it'll take before they would look at it. But we'll take any days that we can get out of this, and hopefully it'll take them a while to figure it out. They do have a timeline in the packet that I, I copied and put in there. So I don't know if that – can't tell what it says exactly as far as where that's at. But I guess they do have a process they follow. So we'll be anxious to see if they actually go through with this. I guess, is there any other questions? That's a lot there. And any questions for staff? <clears throat> thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there any public comment on this? Seeing none, I'll bring it to the commission for action. Uh, Madam Mayor, I move that we adopt resolution 12-6874, authorizing you to sign the attached scientific uh, resolution panel request form. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the commission adopt resolution 12-6874. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes 4-0. Uh, Madam Mayor, at this time I would move that we recess into executive session uh, for a combined total of 40 minutes to discuss with the legal counsel matter subject to the attorney-client privilege for the reason that public discussion of those matters would waive the privilege and adversely affect the city's interest in the matters as well as to move into recess, uh, executive session uh, to discuss matters pertaining to the acquisition of real estate for the reason the public discussion of the matter would adversely affect the city's position in relation to acquisition of real estate and reconvene at, let's say, 510. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we recess into executive session. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes 4-0. Do you anticipate any action? We do not. We're in executive session.